Hello and welcome to this edition of Own the Journey, where we get to interview incredible people from around the world and bring their wisdom to you. Today we get to interview Kurt Marshall, CEO and co-founder of Tie-In Timber here in Springfield. Kurt, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear from you. You've got got a, a, a lot of different experiences in your background. Um, but for those that, that don't know your, your history and, and who you are, tell us just a little bit about what, you, what landed you here. Sure. Well, I'm originally from Springfield, yeah. although I was born in Peoria, Illinois. Okay. And that where, that's where I got my Cubs allegiances. Ah, uh, but I will hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cardinals actually had a pretty good run there, what, 10 years ago or yeah, so? That's yeah, right. yeah. But uh, so I moved back here um, in grade school. My mm -hmm. family's from here and went to Willard. I grew up on the southwest side of town and okay. Willard School District comes into Springfield a bit. Went to high school in Willard, mm -hmm. um, graduated from there and took off to Provo, Utah. Went to Brigham Young University mm -hmm. out there. Got my business management degree. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I jumped to Denver, which I really spent most of my life yeah. out in Denver and kind of grew up in, um, my my uh, career through IT mm -hmm. actually yeah yeah I want to learn more about that that sounds good yeah when when I realized what you guys did it kind of uh, a lot of lot, brought a lot of memories back yeah I'm sure it did um, but then I um, about 2016 2017 mm -hmm. we kind of made our way back home all my family's here there's a lot of opportunity here in Springfield that I'm mm -hmm. excited to talk about and mm -hmm. that's kind of where the brewery happened oh that's amazing so how how did you decide to go from business and IT to making awesome beer. You know, um, I was in IT for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and it was uh, very um, good to me. And I had mm -hmm. a lot of great, uh, had the, I was fortunate to work for a lot of great companies and for mm -hmm. a lot of great people. Um, but I just knew deep down that it wasn't, I was never going to find the best version of myself mm -hmm. in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find something entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And so my wife and partner here at the brewery, uh, we kind of looked, for, she was in IT as well. Uh -huh. And we kind of looked um, over the past several years to do something together. Mm -hmm. And we were in Springfield visiting my family one Christmas and we realized that there's not a lot of breweries here. Mm -hmm. In Colorado, there's over a hundred breweries in Denver and 300 in the state. Wow. And so we went back, I went back home and kind of ran the numbers to see if there might be some opportunity here. And mm -hmm. sure enough, it, it, there was and we kind of, Bit the bullet and, and decide to start a brewery. Do it. Well, yeah, that's exciting. Well, congratulations on all your success. It's 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 become an icon in the community. So it's really neat that you're able to bring that to to town and uh, do something new that that hadn't been here before. Well, I appreciate that. It was really about doing something new and bringing back something to the community that I was raised in. Mm -hmm. And. Um, there is something special about the Roundtree area as well. There's mm -hmm. not many places in Springfield that has um, a business district kind of encompassed within the neighborhood itself. Yeah. So it's very walkable, um, mm -hmm. which I think people are looking for these days. Yeah, the sense of community and belonging. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. So, I mean, it's a big jump to move across the country, start a new business, and start a business with your spouse. Yeah. Um, I, I work with my spouse. I know it's not always easy. Yeah, it can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as you know, probably, um, even though you work with her 24 hours a day and you live with her, mm -hmm. if you're anything like me, you actually don't see her quite that much. Yeah. When we first started the business together, uh, we were very intentional about the different roles that we'd have in the brewery. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer is our executive brewer. Mm -hmm. Executive brewer, she handles all of the back of house, where I handle all of the front of house. And it took us a few years for me to kind of get my fingers out of the back of house. Like mm -hmm. I can be a control freak. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I really stepped back, um, she was able to shine and do her thing. That's awesome. And as I'm sure you probably know as well, it's, it's good to be intentional about date nights. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys, I mean, the, the advice that you would give to people who are considering getting into business with a significant other is be intentional, have a plan, create rules in advance. 
We yeah, we not only had unofficial rules we talked about, we mm -hmm. had we had full contracts and everything set up. So if there if we if we if something happened and one of us wanted out, there mm -hmm. was a way for one of us to get wow, out. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, what made you think of that? You just wanted to, to have a plan that it was sustainable or? I'm a big fan of Plan B's. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so if something, I wanted to go in, there's obviously a lot of stress and anxiety that can come in with starting a business. Yeah, absolutely. And I, know there were, I knew there were going to be challenging points. Mm -hmm. And so if it got to a challenging point, I wanted to make sure that um, her really more than me knew that there was avenues out yeah. we, we wouldn't have to discuss what those avenues were yeah, yeah. in a stressful situation yeah well my, my dad has given me good advice over the years and one of them is that to decide to decide in the future is to not decide at all mm. uh, and it sounds like you you took that in under control and, and decided not to decide in the future but to decide now so you guys were on the same page I'm gonna steal that from you that's yeah. exactly what happened yeah, yeah. That, that's very good uh, so you talked a little bit about Roundtree in the community that so did did you do a lot of searching in Springfield before you landed in, in this particular location we did. There were two areas we were really focusing on. Mm -hmm. Roundtree was one of them, and Galloway Village was the other. Mm -hmm. And really for two reasons. Um, when you look at the brewery industry, there's really three different business models. Mm -hmm. There's the brew pub model, which is pretty much a restaurant that makes its own beer. Mm -hmm. Bruco is a great example of that. Right. Um, you have a distribution model where they're just trying to get their beer out to as many places as possible. Mother's is a great example of that. But there really wasn't a lot of this kind of tap room centric model around town. 4x4 Brewing Company was the first one that I know of in Springfield, and they opened like three three months before us. There was actually a great story. When we closed on this building, we decided to purchase this building. We were living in Denver at the time, and I was I was driving back and forth over, uh, while we opened this place up. And we were closing on the building, and it was maybe 10 or 11 a.m., and I wanted to go and sit down and have a cup of coffee, just kind of, you know, celebrate. Yeah. And I go to Classic Rock Coffee over off Kansas Expressway, and there's these four gentlemen sitting at the end of this long uh, communal table, and they're having a meeting, and they're using acronyms that only someone that was opening a brewery would use. <laughs> and so I'm listening to, and they're obviously opening a brewery, and I'm listening to them, and it's getting to be five or ten minutes to the point where if I don't say something, it's going to be awkward. Yeah. And I introduce myself. And uh, that was the start of a very, very good friendship today. Well, that's amazing. And I think they picked a great spot in mm -hmm. Galloway. Yeah. But Galloway, um, Roundtree, very, very much alike in the sense that you have, it's a it's a commercial neighborhood, a commercial hub inside of a neighborhood. Yeah, yeah and that brings in that, that local presence that, that really brings people to gather together. Yep, and people, you know, people love patios. Mm -hmm. People love sunshine and drinking beer on patios. Yeah, and there's a difference drinking a, you know, a beer on the patio here in the middle of a neighborhood than drinking on the, you know, in the front of a busy street like Sunshine, for example. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think it's really interesting that that you had the opportunity uh, with with a local business who some would say is is competition, but instead of it being competition, you embrace it as a friendship, and and I assume that you're better both, uh, you're you're both better as a result. You know, it's interesting because you have collaboration and you have competition, and I don't think they're mutually exclusive. And I think um, I get asked the question a lot: Do, pe do I think that the craft beer market in Springfield is saturated? Mm -hmm. And there's ten breweries in Springfield right now, and I would argue that yes, while they are my competition, they're not my main competition. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But before I go there, I would I would venture to say if you have a Venn diagram that looks at all of the different um, customer sets of all the different breweries, mm. there would be some overlap, absolutely. But our customer sets are so diverse um, that actually I think we could work well together or work together to actually share customer bases um, more uh, better. And actually, we created the cra the Springfield Craft Beer Collective about three or four years ago, mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons we did that to collaborate so we can actually kind of the rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. And, and you helped to lead that, didn't you, in that initiative? Yep, I was one of the founding members, and I was president um, for a couple of years as well. Um, and now it's kind of taken 
it's taken off mm -hmm. and uh, kind of doing its own thing, which is really nice to see. Well, I, I think there's a huge lesson in that, though. I mean, when, when you think about understanding your target customers and really breaking down the demographics in a community, I mean, so many people are afraid of that, that collaboration. Um, mm -hmm. that I think it's amazing that you guys have decided to really embrace it, understand it, and then kind of focus in on your specialties or your niches so that you, you as, as you said, rising tides. Well, I would say that I completely agree with that. And I would say that, like, who is our customer? Like, if you look at mother's, mother's customer, for example, is a lot different from our customer. Um, because they their customer is a craft beer drinker. And ours is as well. But we're selling, even though we have Tie and Timber Beer Company in the name, we're actually selling an experience. Yes. We have, obviously, we have to have high quality craft beer. Um, but we also have, we have an ambiance. We have this beautiful beer garden out here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we take extreme pride in the hospitality. When, when someone comes here, they're coming because they want to celebrate a birthday mm -hmm. um, or a raise. Um, we have lawmakers coming here discussing policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have people conducting business, we have people celebrating, and so we have, uh, we're very, very fortunate to have a wide variety of people They're and a customer base. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let's talk about that experience for just a minute because I think, I think it's important to share with our audience how, how much a, a product in and of itself just is, isn't what you're selling. It is the, the overall experience. You yeah. guys have really leaned into the music scene, the patio, as you mentioned, and, and then obviously the tap room itself. So you're bringing all of these things together so that it's it's actually creating memories for people in, in yeah. those experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's I think that's amazing. What what made you think of the well, two things. I want to know how you came up with the name, but then what made you think of kind of that overall experience? Um, the name is fairly straightforward. Um, there's train tracks that run right mm -hmm. through here. Yeah. Uh, the train comes once a day. Yeah. Um, and it goes to uh, dead ends at the craft factory now. But it used to go to Chadwick and bring back lumber back. But uh, railroad tie. Mm -hmm. So that's where tie comes from. Mm -hmm. And then this, the property itself was actually a lumber yard for oh, wow. six decades. Mm -hmm. so that's where the timber comes from. So tie and timber beer co. Very good. Yep. Um, but as far as the experience goes, um, to be honest, I wish there was um, some master plan, but really it just kind of eventually started beating itself, beating me over the head, like, hey, this is what you need to be. Really? I was under, I was, looking back on it, we were actually fairly naive, thinking that we were opening up a brewery, and we spent the first 18 months of our journey focusing on the beer, and then the last three weeks, like, you know, we should probably hire some people and mm -hmm. train them, right? Yeah. And it became blatantly clear that we were more than just beer. And at that point, we really had to um, shift into second gear and yeah. really uh, focus on the ambiance. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know when the exact moment was, but there was a moment where we said, you know what, we're not in the beer industry at all. We're in the hospitality industry. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, I, I think there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of wisdom in that. A lot of people think that they're in one industry when they're actually in, in another one. So yep. yeah, that's good stuff. Um, how, how do you how do you find inspiration and creativity both in the way that you bring new ideas to the business and in developing a, a new beer? Oh wow, it's it's really all over the place. To mm -hmm. be quite honest with you, it's within our industry and without. Mm -hmm. So within our in, within our industry, we're we're quite active in different trade organizations and different conferences. Mm -hmm. um, the Craft Beer Conference, essentially, it's an annual uh, beer conference that the Brewers Association puts on every year. And, education and trade show. That's actually next week in Nashville. Oh, and wow. our tap room manager and head brewer are, are headed there to represent Ty and Timber. And I'm sure they'll come back and bring us all kinds of great ideas. Yeah. Um, um, I'm on the board of the, of the uh, Missouri, of Craft Missouri, the Missouri Craft Brewers Guild. Mm -hmm. And of course, networking and, and talking with all, all of our peers out there, and letting, talking with them and seeing what works and what doesn't. But to be honest, most, a lot of the inspiration that we get is from traveling mm. and in looking at industries outside of the beer, the beer industry and even the hospitality industry. I, I was, 
there's a podcast we were talking earlier. I really love podcasts. There's yeah. a podcast, uh, How I Built This, with Guy Raz. Yeah. That talks about it follows different founders and entrepreneurs, and I actually find that very inspirational um, to see how other industries and other founders um, are finding success and trying to steal tidbits of that. Yeah, I love that. What What do you think has been the hardest part in terms of? making the financial model of the business work without getting into a bunch of detail. I mean, it's challenging to, you know, it's it's less than 1% of new businesses that are actually successful and, and make it. Yeah. What, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs that, that are starting a business of any kind? You know, for us, probably our biggest advantage, we were living in, in Denver, mm-hmm. and one of the reasons we moved to Springfield was because there was more opportunity here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was easier to um, finance a building, for example, than mm-hmm. it is in Denver. Yeah. And so I was in Denver making a Denver salary, but I was able to invest those that Denver salary into a smaller city like mm-hmm. Springfield. And so we were very fortunate to be able to find this location. Uh, this actually loca- this location reminds me a lot of where my wife Jennifer and I used to live in Denver 20 years ago. Yeah, it was a small commercial hub in a neighborhood that hadn't quite taken off yet. And so when we saw this, when we saw this area, um, we saw the potential, and nothing like this existed in Denver anymore. Mm-hmm. So just by for looking looking in a smaller market like Springfield, um, that was how we were able to be financially successful. And for any small business owner, it's always nice to be your own landlord. Yeah, yeah, that, that's amazing. It kind of goes back to the, the old real estate mantra, location, location, location. So I wouldn't say location is everything, but whatever is right underneath everything, that's location. We were very fortunate to be able to find this location, and it has, it's been actually very key to our success. Yeah, well, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of uh, great advantages to making sure that, that you're finding a location that gives you permission to cater to the clients that you want to serve and, and being available and, and doing all of those, those yeah. kinds of things. Yeah, that's fair. And and also recognizing, I mean, I, I think it's it's interesting. You, you immediately went to Denver versus Springfield, the cost of living, the, the cost of doing business within those marketplaces. How hard was it to shift or was it easy because you were used to all the big expenses in Colorado and it being so different here? You know, from a personal perspective, I just I kind of assumed there were certain things that would be downgraded. Mm-hmm. You know, moving from a larger city to a to a smaller city. Mm-hmm. But I was actually really pleasantly surprised. One thing, I'm a big music nut. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I lived a mile and a half away from Red Rocks Amphitheater. Okay. And I spent my summers there. Um, and so when I came to Springfield, I really thought I would be missing live music, for instance. Mm-hmm. And I and I came to Springfield, and I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised, actually blown away by the quality of talent and artists we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always thought, another example, I thought that I would be missing having an international airport in my backyard. On the flip side, I love the convenience of the Springfield Airport, yeah, and it's in the it's middle amazing. of the country. So, yeah. I think I had preconceptions, mm-hmm. um, but when I when I came here, actually, that kind of blew me away. I'm really yeah. I'm really pleased. Well, I think I think the the cool part of what you you shared was, I mean, really, you're talking about a, a major shift, but the quality of life associated with what you guys have been able to reduce has just been awesome. I think the quality of life is um, great here in Springfield. I think that there's opportunities and things we could learn mm-hmm. from oh, a sure. larger city. For mm-hmm. example, when I moved to Denver in 1999, um, my, and I had zero preconceptions of what Denver was, I would kind of characterize it as a big cow town. You know, there just wasn't a lot there. Yeah. And it's grown a ton over the past two decades. Um, I, and I think it's grown with culture and with food and with music. And I think one of the benefits that has in a, in a city like Denver is it's really attracted a lot of outside, young, intelligent talent, mm-hmm. which I would love to see Springfield get there. And I think it's trying with some of the, some of the projects it's working on with like the Grant Street Avenue project yes. and mm-hmm. with the daylighting of Jordan Creek. Yep. Um, I hope we get there. Yeah, well, we, we definitely are, are hungry for that top talent in Springfield. I think everybody's yep. fighting for it, but definitely is a big challenge. That, that's amazing. Um, so is, um, 
as, as we get ready to, to kind of think about what the future holds for tie-in timber and what you guys see coming down the pipe, um, what, what's, what's the future of craft beer? What's the future of tie-in timber? I mean, obviously craft beer has gained in popularity and some would argue that it's overpopulated, but um, what, what do you see coming down the pipe? Yeah, so in the industry, craft beer's growth is actually slowing. Is it? Um, it's still growing, mm -hmm. but it is slowing. Um, it's growing at a rate, um, small breweries like us are growing at a faster rate than mm -hmm. larger breweries. Um, for us personally, I, we have extra capacity and demand in our brewing system. So how can we take advantage of that extra <laughs> capacity? Um, and the best way to do that is to expand um, twofold. One, and we almost and we actually almost did expand on, on the south side and have a no oh, really have a yeah a south side tap room mm -hmm. before COVID. Uh, so that's one way we can expand, and I think eventually we might do something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other way to expand is to expand this campus. Actually, mm -hmm. we have a building right over here on the other side of the beer garden that's just sitting over there. It's our storage and it's our office, and we have plans to knock it down this summer and to build. Um, a two-story complex over there with, oh, wow. a, with a small kitchen and a couple bars and that allow us to obviously use our extra capacity um, it also allow us to feed our guests yeah because we have an exodus of people um, that leave around dinner time yeah and we're really fortunate that we have so many incredible restaurants right around yeah we have teen taco across the street was incredible we have mm -hmm. scully's ramen across the street mm -hmm. uh, but it would be nice to uh kind of keep some of those customers mm -hmm. here yeah, so absolutely. that's what we're going to focus on well that, that sounds pretty amazing well as we wrap up one of my favorite questions to ask everybody is if you're gonna if you're gonna pay some advice forward or the best advice that you ever receive what would that be oh wow that's a good question um i would say the the best advice, I'll answer that two ways. Yeah. The best advice I could give is find in anything, in business or anything, find yourself a mentor. Find yourself someone who is just crushing it and doing exactly what you want to do and find some way to find to, to bring that person value. Mm -hmm. We were talking um, earlier for this interview about the, the mindset of abundance. Yes. Give. Find the person that you want to be like, find them value, give to them, mm -hmm. and I think you'll find that come back your way fourfold. Um, but it also, when you asked the question, it reminded me of s some advice that Jeff Schrag gave me. Um, Jeff Schrag is the founder and CEO of Mother's Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know Jeff very well at the time. I had met him because I just called him up out of the blue and asked him about the Springfield uh, beer market when we were write writing the business plan. But two days before we opened, he called me and said, don't forget to enjoy the moment. Mm. And I wish I was better at that. Yeah. And I wish I would have heeded his heeded his advice because I don't remember too much about that opening day. <laughs> um, but he, but five years later, um, I'm still I still hear that voice, uh, Shaga's voice in my head. And so don't forget to enjoy the moment. Yeah, I love that. that that's. We should all do a better job of that. I think we should. And all the way through life. Well, Kurt, congratulations to everything that you have accomplished. I'll raise my glass to you and say, congrats on owning your journey. Cheers, appreciate Cheers. you. Cheers, thank you.